I recently did a quick encouraging devotional at church on being made in the image of God, and I thought it would be fun to do a quick video on that. The only problem was when I started diving into Genesis 1, it is way more in depth and the video ended up being too long for one video. So I'm breaking this up into three separate videos, each one going in depth on a different part of Genesis 1:26. Hey, I'm Josh, and this is Understanding the Bible, and on this channel, I want to help you understand what the Bible says and what it means. But most importantly, I want to help you have tools to study the Bible for yourself. And today we're going to be looking at one of my favorite tools, an interlinear Bible, in a passage that shows really well just what an interlinear Bible can do. Because when you read this in English, there's no way to answer the question. But as soon as you jump into an interlinear Bible, there's an easy answer that stands out right away. So let's go ahead and dive in to Genesis 1, 26. This is the sixth day of creation, and God has already created everything else in the universe. So he's on his final piece, and God creates humanity. Then God said, Let us make man in our image, after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the heavens, and over the livestock, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. So we have here the creation of man and kind of the, the job that's entrusted. And, and there's a lot of words in here that are um, interesting. Like you notice I just said man instead of humanity. That's going to be one of the words to break down. But let's take this piece by piece and see what we can see when we dive in deeper. The first thing we see is this here. Then God said, let us make man. And this is a formula that we've seen throughout. And it's actually been using the word and. So if we go up to the top, see the first thing that God creates here in verse 3, and God said, let there be light. And God said, let there be an expanse. And God said, and it keeps going on with each thing that God is creating. That it's saying, and God said, and then the creation happens. And so one of the first things I wondered is, why is the word then here instead of and? It's different. It's breaking the formula. Is it telling us something important? And when you're looking at English, sometimes you're trying to make these guesses, but you're not sure what's going on in the original language that it was written in Hebrew. So I jumped over into an interlinear Bible to see if it would explain why then is being used instead of and. Um, and the first thing we saw when I looked here at the interlinear is that it's actually translated and. Um, it's, this, um, it's this verb... Wyomer. Uh, sorry, my Hebrew is not the best, so if that pronunciation is a bit funny, apologies. And this is an interesting type of verb that we don't have in English. You can see this kind of breakdown right here. Basically, this verb is having this sense of something being part of a series, and so we don't have that type of verb. We, we have to use extra word like and or then, and and is the most common way to do it. There may have been some reasons with the other verbs and the sentence why they use then here. Or maybe the translator, they're just setting this apart because there's other clues in the paragraph that make it stand out. But the verb itself right here is the same as the verb we're going to see in those other verses. So if we look here at verse 24, we see, and God said. Well, if we, if we go back to 24, we're going to see it's the same verb. See, it's this same verb right here. We can see it kind of transliterated, so it's easier to read. It's the exact same verb. So there's nothing going on with this. It's the same as before. But this next part really does change the pattern. So let us make man in our image is very different than what we've seen coming before. Before, God said, let there be light. So he's jumping straight into the creation. So God says... And creation happens. God said, let there be an expanse. This happens with each of these and God says, let the waters under the heavens be gathered. Let the earth sprout vegetation. And it's the pattern continues throughout. But then here when God is making humanity, the pattern changes. It's no longer and God said, let there be man. No, instead God stops and he thinks and he discusses with himself what he's about to do. He doesn't just create humanity, he pauses 
to reflect and to share with us his thinking on the creation that humanity is going to be created in the image after God's likeness. Well, I hope that's been helpful. I hope it shows the value of using an interlinear Bible. And it also shows how you can, uh, kind of like God did in this passage, slow down and look at something and find some in-depth meaning in a passage where you would typically skim right through it. All right, well, the next video is going to be coming out soon, and that's going to be breaking down, continuing to see that God is saying, let us make man in our image. And we're going to ask, what does it mean that God is speaking in the plural? Go ahead and make sure you're subscribed so you'll be able to see that one when it comes out.